And hello everyone, welcome back. So we went over while loops in the previous video. Let's do some for loops instead. Now a for loop is basically a while loop with a counter already inside it. So for those of you that were having problems with getting infinite loops, you forgot to keep adding the counter. Well, we can fix that with a for loop very easily. So while a while loop started with while, a for loop starts with for. So let me just say, and here's the thing, we can declare variables inside these loops as well. So let me just name a variable and call it letters or a letter. And I'll say for letter in, and I'll put a string. So let me just say uh, banana. Okay, so for however many letters are in banana, I will simply print the letter and it'll execute and we'll see what will happen. B-A-N-A-N-A. -A -N -A. It went and found every single letter. Here was part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, part six. And it just went all in a row. It was essentially using this as its own counter. Nice, easy to understand. So let me just uh, print out uh, a new line or two. Yeah, let's uh, do new line, new line, just to get some space in between these. So that's a for loop using letters. Let's use a for loop using numbers. So for, I don't know, number in a range, in a range of five. Why not? For range. And I'll just simply say print number. So now it'll print the numbers from, you know, up to five inside that range. Execute. And see, zero, one, two, three, four. Once again, remember the difference between the memory slot and the data point, because it starts with zero. This is still one, two, three, four, five bits of data. It's just, it starts on zero, ends on four. Okay, just remember that. And let me just copy this guy down here, print him out, get some new space in there. We can do the same thing once again. Let's go back to strings here but instead let's go with a word bank. So I'll just say here's a word bank and my word bank is equal to, uh, I'll say it is banana. Whoops, 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 let me use quotes. Banana. And then I can also once again say, you know, apple. And I can say strawberry. I got three different words there. And I can simply say four, I don't know, words or word in word bank. So for however many words there are in word bank, there's one, two, three of them. I'll simply print the word and execute. And oops, name word bank is not defined. What did I miss? Oh, because I capitalized the B. There we go. Now let me execute it. Then went banana, apple, strawberry. It printed all three of them with just, you know, that one print statement because it went back through the entire loop with its own self-counter going in there. And, of course, the same thing if these weren't words and these were instead, you know, numbers, like there was a five, a three, and a, and a you know, one. Execute it. It would still give me the five, the three, and the one. So, once again, you can store multiple things, not just strings inside of it, although I named it word bank, so I should probably keep them as words. But now, let's do ourselves a, uh, let's copy that again and paste it. Let's make ourselves a fourth for loop here, and this will be for, you know what, I'll name it numbers again, numbers in range. Now, here's what the difference, this is gonna be a difference from this simple range of five. What I'm gonna do here with this range is I'm going to have three parts. My starting point, which I'll just make a zero. My ending point, 50. And then I'll say my counter, my integers. It's going to be five. So I'm going to count up by five. So from zero to five to 10 to 15, so on and so forth. So I have my start point, my end point, and how many steps I'm taking every single time. And I'll go and I'll print numbers and of course execute this out and you'll see 
It went from 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. A for loop is just a while loop with a counter already set in. And from here on out, I have myself my start point, my end point, my counter. In this particular one, I have all three of them set in one line. So I don't have to use multiple lines to say, you know, if this, while this, and then on a separate line, you know, have the counter in there. And on a third line, have a start point up above. I can declare my variable, put it at a starting point. I can declare my ending point, And I can declare my counter all in the same line. So you can get a lot of stuff done with a for loop. And you can get the same stuff done with a while loop. But generally, a for loop will take less space to do. If I were to try that out with a while loop, I would be doing something like, uh, you know numbers two equals zero. And then I'd say, you know, while numbers two is less than 50. And then I'd have to, you know, print uh, numbers. Then I'd have to say something like, you know, numbers equals numbers plus five. Okay, so in two lines, I got a for loop. And in four lines, the same scenario with a while loop. So it's just a matter of how it is you want to do it when you come to the big project, but I'm just showing you both options. So once you get something that looks like this, go ahead and save it, print it out, and submit it. And I'll see you in the big project next week where you're going to put all these things with the if statements and the loops. You're going to put it all together for your big project in Python. Okay? You guys have a great day, and I'll see you next week.